Morning all, welcome. Different format for you, mum was never a stranger to technology. So here we are. I couldn't trust myself to do this in person off the cuff. You'll see me sitting down there crying my bloody eyes out. I don't want to uh, become incoherent, so please bear with me and I will be rambling a bit. Please have a look around you. You'll find yourself surrounded by friends and family of mum and those of you who are here just to support us through today. She had a huge influence on all of us. Mum was the last surviving sibling of her family, having lived a long and productive life. First as an expert seamstress, then as a mother to us. Sounds a bit brief? Well, it isn't really. Anyone who knew Mum will attest to the quality of her dressmaking. Many in public career had Mum make their debutant ball grounds wedding gowns, bridesmaids outfits, all those garments for special occasions that she did so well. She made Sharon's gown, which subsequently was awarded runner-up in the county's Bride of the Year 1973. Our bridesmaid and flower girls had their gowns made from some scribbled measurements and a photo from a magazine. Mum sketched the garments, crafted patterns and sewed them up. There wasn't much time for alterations, but it didn't really matter. She got it right the first time. Denise put her gown on and it fitted perfectly. Then she was a mother. She embodied everything a mother could be to us. A grandmother and a great grandmother to our kids. A deft touch with all kids. You'll see in the slideshow to come, there's not many photos of mum in her middle years. Mum never hogged the limelight. Mum was always there in a support role, just doing what had to be done. She didn't want any fuss and bother made about her. Come birthday time, we need to do something for your birthday mum. No, I don't want any fuss or bother. Just have a happy time. No fuss or bother, it was just, that was mum. Just doing what had to be done. Completely selfless. She was the person on the sideline when dad played footy. Uh, my siblings won't remember this, I was the first child. When I yelled out, supporting dad as a, as a six month old, I was dressed in a uniform, county's manicow. <laughs> that, that dad played and mum had made that for me. Um, at club athletics, it was mum that helped Ethel keep in the lolly shop. Uh, I was going to say they manned the lolly shop, but that wouldn't be right. They, were, they mummed it. She just did this stuff. I mean, times were tough. Raising five kids, definitely a struggle. Mum ran her household on a very tight budget. All of us were clothed and well fed. Mum's household skills even extended to cleaning the rabbits and fish that Dad sometimes brought home. She did, however, draw the line at breaking the wild pig down. Although she wasn't too, ha too, too da uh, bad a hand at breaking down a quarter. I recall a time at Huapai Street, only hunger, when I was being attacked by an escapee Muscovy and mum rescuing me with a broom. One year old. Little did she realise it was me that slipped the catch and couldn't get it done back up. I remember these times supporting the Manukau Rovers in my little strip. Mum was always there. She just didn't feature in the foreground. That's why she's not in these pictures. I remember the trips on the tram. Yes, we used to have a tram back then, from Onehunga into Auckland City, visiting various haberdashers, material shops. I sat there thumbing my way through pattern catalogues while Mum selected fabric. Lunch up in Farmer's Playground, all those tantalising smells and all the cool activities. Heck to the parrot. These are my memories. My siblings have their own. Hopefully one day they'll write them down too so they can share them with their kids and grandparents. I looked at some old photos. Man, boy, were we always dressed so well. It was incredible. Mum just looked after us so well on very limited resources. She did it. I remember these times. 
in Huapai Street where we lived until I was seven years old before shifting to Papakura. I remember the neighbourhood kids. Huapai Oni Hunger, for those of you who know Oni Hunger, very steep street, perfect venue for trolleys. But given the materials we had back in those days, the trolleys weren't always very well engineered. They have a habit of falling apart halfway down the hill. Subsequent injuries, mum became a very dab hand at uh, running repairs. I still carry some of the scars from those days. Then my siblings started appearing and we moved to Papakura. Mum took in dressmaking to help make ends meet and was very skilled at making meals go further by adding up dumplings. We dined on wild pork, venison and rabbits. Nothing phased Mum. She had a recipe for everything that came into her kitchen. Time moved on. I married and moved out. Mum entered another phase and started up her own business, dressmaking for her own shop. Firstly in Sandringham, then in Green Lane. Then she moved back to Papakura, opening up a wool shop. A series of moves of around town didn't phase her customers. They all followed her. Everyone in Papakura will remember Inslee's wool shop. And there was that lady behind the counter that you could take any of your problems to and she'd help you. I think the secret to her success in Papakura business was her encyclopedic knowledge of knitting and sewing. She could help anybody. Time marches on and she retired to be the consummate nana for all and any recalcit recalcitrant kids Sorry, soon fell under her thrall and became well behaved kids that parents just didn't recognise anymore. Nana June could do anything to her kids. They just listened to her, did what she said. Nana June was the rock we all relied on. She was the place we could take our kids for that little bit of extra help. She was an avid genealogist. Soon became frustrated with microfish. It was fiddly. It took forever. She just went out and bought herself a computer. Didn't take long. She was up and running. Away she was going researching on her newfound tools of the trade. This at 80 years old. Didn't bother at all. Falling health. Saw her sequestered, first at Elmwood, and then into Erin Park Rest Home, Manorewa, nearly three years ago. There she was supported by amazing and compassionate staff. She came, soon became everyone's friends. I really have to recognise that Erin Park staff for the unfailing compassion and support they showed us all during Mum's last days. Sorry. It was obvious that Mum had made a huge impact on them too. And so we now move into the final part of Mum's time with us. Just the physical part, mind you. She lives on in all their hearts and thoughts. It's up to us now to be the rock, the guiding light that Mum always was for us. Let's make her proud of us. Blessings to all, and in Dave Allen's words, may your God go with you.